What is up guys, Fi here, and the first thing I'm going to say is I'm pretty ill right now, and so I'm losing my voice, but I wanted to do a video anyway, so I apologise, I'm going to sound a little bit weird. So in this Learn to Teamfight video, we're going to be going over immobile AD carries, so people like Jinx, Ash, Draven, those who don't have an escape and have to be extra careful. As always with these kind of videos, I'm going to play the fight through first, we're going to watch that, and then I'll go back and I'll break it down for you. So the first thing to talk about when we're looking at immobile AD carries, and this also goes for immobile mid laners or top laners, anything like that, is if you don't have an escape, you have to be extra careful. And the way you're gonna do that is by kind of a threat assessment. Now I might do a video on this entire idea because it is really important, but just in brief, basically it's asking yourself what can kill me. So in this game, what can kill me? Well, most likely it's gonna be a leasing kick back into the team. It's gonna be an Orianna ultimate or a Nar ultimate. Those are the three things that I have to be really careful to make sure I avoid. All right, so let's just pause the game here to start with. And the first thing we can see is that three of my team are really clumped up and we're kind of diving forward onto their team. The only option I have right now is to attack Lee Sin, right? He's the only target I can actually reach without putting myself in danger. So I'm attacking him, but I'm also placing my axes behind me. And that's pretty much just because of the Orianna ultimate. So if we play this forward, you'll see that as soon as the Orianna ultimate has come down, I become way more aggressive. I start running forward and I place my axes in front of me so that I can chase the fight. So because we've killed two people and we haven't lost anyone, in my mind, this fight is pretty much won. Like I'm going Rambo right now. I'm running into the enemy team because I think this fight is basically over. So if I was playing someone like Lucian or Graves, this wouldn't actually be such a big deal because as Nar jumps forward, I could just jump backwards and I would have avoided the stun. The problem here with Draven is that by the time I actually see Nar jumping onto me it's way too late and there's nothing I can do to change my position. What I should have done is I should have been standing about here I think and just attacking the Nar because he wouldn't have been able to get onto me we would have killed him and then the rest of the team and won the fight. Right so let's move on to the second game and this is going to be playing another immobile carry in Ash. Now this is a much better example of how to kite with an immobile AD carry and it also shows you how important target selection is but let's just play it through first and then we'll go back to it. So this is about where the fight breaks out, right? And just to point out, we're actually really far behind this game. The only target I can realistically reach right now is going to be Rek'Sai, and I don't do a ton of damage for him, but I don't really have a choice. I can't run through this Thresh box here, which is cutting me off from the entire rest of the team. And while I do kind of want to go for the carries at the back, as we saw in the Draven fight, as an immobile carry, it's better to just take the closest target to you. The other thing that you're going to see as we roll this clip is that Rumble uses his ultimate down the middle of this brush, and while it does kind of zone me from the rest of the team I can just about still reach Rek'Sai and so that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to output the maximum amount of damage that I can to the closest target so right now I have the three carries on their team in front of me and there's no way that I can walk forward and attack Rumble but I can walk backwards and attack him. Walking back and attacking him as I do means that I get damage onto him but I'm also keeping myself out of range of the Ari and the Callista so I'm getting damage onto them while they can't return any. Okay so now I'm in a better position, I'm next to Nidalee and I'm only really being focused by two of them. This is a really good thing for me and this is what gives me the confidence to go back in because they've split into Ari and Rumble onto me and Callista and Thresh onto a Nivea. This means that even though the enemy has four people here, I'm actually only really against two, and those are the only two that I have to worry about. If we again skip this forward, this is to the right at the end of the fight, and I get a little bit bloodthirsty, and it ends up costing me the life and costing the team fight. So the problem here is that I am tunneled straight onto Callista because she's the highest priority target for me, and there's no reason that I should ever focus the support over the Callista. So that decision in itself, going for Callista over Thresh, is correct, right? But the problem and the mistake I make is that I tunnel so hard on Callista that I don't watch Thresh and I don't see the Thresh hook coming until it's way too late. 
If I had actually been keeping an eye on that Thresh and seen the hook coming, I could have dodged it pretty easily, and I've no doubt that I would have won the team fight afterwards. But because I got hooked, I ended up costing my team the fight, and that's kind of the problem with immobile AD carries when you don't have Flash. So that wraps up this video, and I hope you guys found it useful, and it gives you a little bit more confidence when you're playing these immobile carries in a team fight. I'm sorry again that I am ill and I sound a bit off, but hopefully I'll be back to normal soon. And that's all for this video, so I'll catch you next time.